Hi everyone, Dorota Palicka, International Nail Artist and Educator here and today we will be playing with some acrylic paints and one stroke flowers. Have we preview of them in here? As you know, it is my favorite technique and I hope I will get you addicted to it as well. It is an awesome and quick way to decorate the client's nails. If you're new in here, don't forget to subscribe as there is lots of tutorials coming up every Monday, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Also to the existing subscribers, guys, thank you so much for all your likes, comments and shares. Let's start. So this is how we are going to start with the background, which is going to be kind of ombre, uh, color 238, which is pink. And I will do it just opposite what I did on the previous one. And um, orange 239. And the easiest way to kind of blend the colors is to play with the sponges. And I've got all my messy sponges here. So what you have to do it is just tap to kind of blend it. And then use the pink one to do the pink side. So it isn't a typical ombre when we blending two colors because I want those, actually I should have a fresh one, uh, because I want those uh, white to be visible in the middle. I'm just cutting a small piece of the fresh sponge because this pink is quite strong. I actually get away doing with the one sponge. Yes, I can. And then cure it. So one side of the sponge has orange, one side of the sponge has pink. Sometimes tap it in to remove any fluff which might be on the sponge. And then just repeat depending how pigmented you want it. But of course don't go as high with the second layer. And I love sponging technique, it's always so nice and effective. Now, just because we are going to apply some white, I'm going to do like a very thin edge of very pigmented color. Just the small touches of the sponge. And then cook it, we are ready for the next step. So you want to grab some milky gel, but what I like to do is I, I've got an old top coat and I have just added a drop of the white gel polish in there. And that's kind of give me a nice and um, nice milky top coat. I'm just top coating this design with this color. But try to don't go too much to the edges because we want the edges to be more visible.
And then once I apply it, then I'm picking up a slightly bigger scoop and I'm doing like a rounded shape in the middle. Cure it. So I apply it almost everywhere except the end and the cuticle area. And then pick up another scoop of it. And do it more in the middle. Okay, next step is we want to bring in some black glitter. So I've got another top coat, which is an old top coat, <laughs> hardly anything on it. And I'm just dipping in my brush in a glitter, black glitter. And then randomly apply it over my design. Use what I've got left over, maybe not, more I need. And you want to have some, you want them to be kind of really nice and random, like so some places will have more of those black dots, some places will have less. And just because you can see it, we have just pick it up, those glitter with the top coat, we need to encapsulate this glitter. So I'm just same top coat, I'm just going over it again. And then when my tips are cooking, I'm going to prepare my acrylic paints for the next step. And of course, we have to go with my favorites. So magenta. Squeeze a small scoop of it. This one is almost at the end, it looks because it's my favorite one. <laughs> then grab some white. And a drop of the black and green. Perfect, my tips are ready, so let's buff them. So that will smooth out any imperfections which we might create it applying the glitter. And also it will get rid of the transition in between those white uh, shape we have applied like in the middle. actually look quite cool just like that even. Okay, that's them ready. And now you want to grab your one stroke brush and we'll paint some flowers. So I've got some water in here. And get my brush to soften, like be nice and behave. Grab the deliner brush. The deliner brush was used previously in a gel, so I have to get rid of the gel which I've got in here. You have to always kind of make your brush to exercise a little bit, like pick up a new product, clean it, and then it is ready for a painting. 
almost, you can see it doesn't behave yet. There we are, it's getting there. You can see um, it's much easier for me to do the rounded shape now. Number eight is a really good uh, way to exercise your brush, like then it kind of flows in any direction you want. Um, so without of training my brush first, it will be very difficult to, to paint. Okay, and very simple flowers we are gonna do. Look how nice and thin I'm able to to paint now. So that's just some branches and as you can see it, I'm trying to do them completely random different new different branch and then we will slap a couple flowers around it leave lots of water on my brush so it doesn't uh, dry with the paint and put it on the side and now we are gonna go for the white and magenta and I'm gonna mix those colors very strongly so the white isn't as as white like so it's almost becomes pink and then we can start painting those little flowers here so as you are on the bottom you want to do a slightly bigger ones And the master brush, guys, is the most microscopic one-stroke brush you can get, which means you can do different kind of movements because when your brush is quite large, it can sometimes be difficult to press it really hard uh, on your needle. Um, while with this brush, even if you use full brush and you press harder, you would still get a very tiny flowers. This one is already ready for another layer of the petals. And as you go on the top, you go smaller. Okay, let's do it here. I'm going to show you the difference in the sizes of the brushes. So here I want to do a really large one. I'm painting one petal, the other petal is going to the top. Basically you could do just a touch of the brush and it will give you petal as well. And I really like when my paint is mixed quite strongly. I don't like when the colors are too separated. It looks a bit fake. Okay, now I can do the next row of the petals. Clean my brush just because it is getting quite a lot of paint now. Mm 
This painting is so therapeutic. And it looks so pretty. Okay, another one. Pick the color upside down, clean it. And I need to show you the difference in the size of the brushes as well. So that is your Demaster and that is your one stroke level one, like when they flat. You can see it's like much, much smaller. And honestly, it's almost just like a touches of the of the brush. You can do quite large one here. Also, look how pigmented the acrylic paints are. Like they can easily cover the black glitter which is underneath. Okay, touch them up with the second row of the petals. And the second row of the petals is honestly, it is just a touch. Okay, I'm gonna do now bigger mixture so I have less white again. I kind of make my paint much more messier. Very large one on the bottom. Bring it down. Then come up. Okay, I'm happy with this one. So we are gonna do the last touches. Go back to the deliner brush, which was left with lots of water in, but as you can see it, it's still hardened a little bit. So I'm kind of cleaning it and softening again. Going to the green and magenta this time. Lots of water in. And I'm just gonna kind of blend them. So they don't fly in the air. Like I know they are on the steam, but like you want to give them kind of leaves or something in there. This one will be ready. Such as delicate flowers.
and I'm sure your clients would be extremely impressed to get those kind of design on their nail. Okay, next step, last one. <laughs> so I'm just gonna bring a tiny bit of gold because I love gold. Transfer foil gel, some black one so you can see it what I'm painting. Where is my spatula? Mix it. Deliner brush. So again, I have to retrain my brush, uh, get rid of the product which I was using before. So I clean it with the water, get into my mixture, get my brush to drink the new product, clean it. That's it. Exercise my brush a little bit. And we're ready for the next detail. Okay, so in some places I want some extremely small gold detail. Can you see that in the camera? A bit. A bit. Yeah, if I would paint with clear, it would be like impossible to see it at all. So I really want to keep it nice and slim. The slimmer, the better, guys. Yeah, the flowers are quite... Delicate, very delicate. delicate. So I cannot overdo it, you know. That's plenty. I'm not going to cure it yet because the thinner you apply your product, the more precise with the curing time you have to be. Okay, and uh, this one is actually really nice. And uh, I need to be very precise, so I cannot cure them yet. So basically what I'm doing in this one, I'm just kind of drawing like a wee grass kind of thing <laughs> coming out from the flower. Plenty, less is more. And what I will love about this design the most is once we apply the top coat, things will look even better because that's the joys of using acrylic paints. Okay, perfect. So we are gonna cure them 15, 15 seconds. Like really 15 seconds, two at the time. So I can get the foil really precise because it's extremely thin foil and I don't, um, thin lines and I don't want to overcook it. Okay, first one is ready. Perfect. Even 15 seconds was too much for this one. Okay. 
and also I'm not gonna repeat the same mistake because when you're painting big you are not too fast but when you're painting like extremely small things you have to be very precise so I'm, I'm putting the this is my kind of technique to get the foil right on the tips on the client is easier because you can press harder so what I'm doing is I'm placing blue tack so I do not touch things with my hand there is a tiny bit blue tack there and what I can do now is I can go like this And I can be much more precise. Perfect. This one is nice. So this one I got it 100% right. The first one not. I've got some missing places at the top. You have guys seen me doing a transfer foil with this within a seconds, and obviously, like the thinner you work, the harder it becomes. But I love it when it's so thin. There we are. And then I've got it here. Yay, I got it. See, now I could press it harder, so I did got it. We've got another one. So pretty. Okay, those tips are gonna go for exactly 10 seconds. Okay, so 15 seconds was too long for me in this lamp. Exactly, a 10 seconds, not even a second longer. There we are, that's the ready. I need to do that way. It's hard to show it in a camera and record. Don't be. Patrick is like, ah, she's running away from the camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know you want to show everything, but sometimes it's impossible. I really, really do so many ugly designs because like I'm trying to do it in a camera. It's really difficult, guys, like, but this one I cannot, I cannot make it ugly, sorry. <laughs> it's too pretty to mess up with this one. Uh. So yeah, making this design uh, pretty is a priority. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness, they are amazing. I think they are my new favorites now. Okay. Sorry, I need to get the foil right. And there is no room for a mistake when working with the transfer foil. Guys, do not give up. Like uh, if you're trying the transfer foil first time, do not give up. It's a technique which you need to learn. Same one stroke, it's a technique which you need to learn. And my roses was looking like an ugly cabbages when I start painting one stroke. Uh, the more you practice, the better results you do. We also offer those one stroke trainings on our, um, on our website as well. You can check them out like for the beginners where I do explain the mixtures of the planes, the angles of the brush. So I go probably even more in a detail if you can do more in a detail because each time I'm trying to explain things really well. Uh, but it's an amazing, amazing technique which you need to know how to use it in a sound. Look at this, like after applying the top coat, things becomes even more life. Uh, so we are gonna cook them and then they will be all ready. I love them so much, like so much going on in there but still very delicate, elegant nails. I think they are my new favorites. Honestly, they are. And I think I could even possibly have it on my nails. Just a perfect combination. Of course, all the products we have used today are available on our website as well, which I always give you a link in the description of the video. And for those of you guys who are the members on our channel as well, because we've got some kind of different tiers of the memberships, I do remember guys check the community tab because that's sometimes when I give you a wee uh, extra bonus like a training or, or something. Um, so keep checking those community tab for an extra content we produce for you as well. So we've got this one here. I love them. I love them. So, so pretty. 
so you have to share <laughs> click the share button for me pretty pretty please so this video can get lots of views and then this one here Got too much blue tack now oh wow i love them honestly i do love them so much it's like one is prettier than the other there we are oh come on i love this last moment when i can show you them like in zoom and position and everything so oh wow oh wow they do look amazing. The light is crap. Is it better? Yeah, oh. it's better. They look better, guys, in a real life, of course, than they do in a camera because it's always very hard to catch the things on a camera. But we've got so much going on in here, but they still very delicate and elegant. I'm sending you huge glittery hugs and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. Bye.